In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the Most High God, we thank God for you now that are tuned in around the world. Thank God for giving you a mind to tune into this program. Tonight, we want to answer some questions uh, that have been called to us and also emailed to us uh, from television viewers around the world. We thank God first and foremost for you tuning in to the program. We received a call from a brother Terry from Baltimore. I thank God for the brother watching the program. He called and simply left a message that concerning our teaching some weeks ago when we was teaching Matthew 19, where Jesus said, whosoever put away his wife except it be for fornication. And he simply called and left the message that uh, he's not saying that the pastor is wrong. He said, but the pastor just left some things out. He said, the pastor left out the fact that uh, when the Bible said, whosoever put away his wife except it be for fornication, he said that uh, they wasn't married in so many words because married people do not commit fornication. Well, let me say to you, Brother Terry, we did leave that out, and we left that out on purpose. We left it out because that teaching is not according to the scripture, brother. It's not according to the scripture. Now, I am familiar with that teaching, whereby some say where Jesus made the statement in Matthew 19 and 9, whoever put away his wife except it be for fornication, I'm familiar with the teaching whereby they say, well, they was only, that's dealing with those that are espoused and not married. Well, the scripture never said that, brother. It never said that. If, that, if the scripture didn't say that, then I can't teach that. Now, my brother left on the machine, he referenced Mary and Joseph as an example of Matthew 19 and 9. I'm going to read Mary and Joseph, and then we go into Matthew 19, and I'm going to show you it has nothing to do with Mary and Joseph. Right. Hear me talking now. Matthew 19 and 9 has nothing whatsoever to do with Mary and Joseph. Right. Mary and Joseph was espoused. Matthew 19 is dealing with a legitimate marriage. Right. I left that out on purpose, brother. It wasn't a mistake. Hear me talking now. Brother, first give me Matthew 118. Let's go over here first and deal with <clears throat> Mary and Joseph. Matthew chapter 1, and we're going to start reading at verse number 18. What did it say, twin? Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Bible said the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Mary was what to Joseph? Espoused to Joseph. Mary was what to Joseph? Espoused. Espoused, in lay terms, is an engagement. Espoused, a promise to marry. Do you understand? Yes, I agree. When they became espoused, the scripture is going to refer to Mary as his wife and Joseph as her husband. I agree with that, but that ain't got nothing to do with Matthew 19. Hear me talking. What did it say, brother? When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. She was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together. Before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Mary was pregnant. My God, man, she was found with child before they came together. And Joseph knew, I ain't touched her. And she done popped up pregnant. We got a problem here. What did he say, son? Then Joseph, her husband. Joseph, her what? Her husband. Joseph, her what? Her husband. But the Bible said they was espoused. But the scriptures is defining him as her husband. I agree with that. When they was espoused, they was referred to as husband and wife. I agree with that. But this ain't got nothing to do with Matthew 19. What did it say, brother? Being a just man. Joseph being a just man. And not willing to make her a public example. What, what did he do, brother? Was minded to put her away privately. How was he going to put her away? Privately. He didn't want to, my God, embarrass her. He's going to put her away because he thinks she, my God, fornicated. So he's going to put her away, but he's just going to do it privately. What did it say, brother? But while he thought on these things. What happened, son? Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. And said what? In a dream, saying. What? Joseph. Joseph? Thou son of, of David. Thou son of David? Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Thy what? Thy wife. Thy what? Thy wife. Well, they only espoused. I agree. They was referred to as husband and wife. Drop down around verse 24, if I'm not mistaken. 
Drop down to verse 24. What did it say, sir? Then Joseph being raised from sleep. And did what, he, what did he do? Did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. And what did he do? And took unto him his wife. He took unto him his wife. And knew her not till she. Didn't had, touch her. Didn't lay with her until when? Till she had brought forth her firstborn son. Read it. And he called his name Jesus. He couldn't touch her. It wasn't time yet. He couldn't touch her until Jesus was born. Because let me tell you something. No man can lay claim to being the natural father of Jesus. Do you understand? My God, he's the only begotten son of God. So therefore, my God, man, he didn't lay with her. He didn't touch her until after Jesus got here. Do you understand? So now, yes, they was referred to as husband and wife. I agree with that. But give me Matthew 19, brother. Before you go there, give me Luke real fast, 2-4. I want to certify some more. Luke 2, 4. Listen to this now. Luke 2, 4. Then give me Matthew 19 and 9. Luke 2, 4 said what? And Joseph also went up from Galilee. Read it. And out of the city of Nazareth into Judah. Unto, read it. Unto the city of David. Unto which, the city of David. Which is called Bethlehem. What did it say, son? Because he was the house of, of the house and the lineage of David. He was of the house and lineage of David? To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife. What kind of wife? Espoused wife. What kind of wife? Espoused wife. That's the engaged wife or the, uh, or the promised wife. Do you understand? I agree with all of that. But give me Matthew 19 now, brother, and give me verse 9. Hear me talking now. Matthew 19 and 9. I want to show you, brother Terry, this has nothing to do with Mary and Joseph now. Matthew 19 and 9, what did it say, son? And I say unto you. What did I say? Whosoever shall put away his wife. Jesus said, whosoever shall put away his espouse wife. His wife. His espouse wife. His wife. Ain't no espousal over here, brother Terry. Right. Look here, when the Bible dealing with espouse, they spelled it out. It ain't dealing with espousal here. Right. What did it say, son? Whosoever shall put away his wife. Whoever shall put away his wife. Except it be for fornication. Except it be. Now you said fornication is only committed by single people. Fornication is not committed by marriage. We're going to see according to the scripture. Right. My God, man, you see, we can't just follow tradition. We got to follow what's written in that Bible right there. Do you understand? Him and talking. I heard that teaching, brother Terry, but the scriptures just don't spell it out. Do you understand? What did the book say there, brother? Whosoever shall put away his wife. Whoever put away his wife. Except it be for fornication. Except it be for fornication. Yes, that husband. Yes, that wife. Yes, that legitimate marriage. They can commit fornication. They can commit fornication. What is fornication? It's unlawful sex. Amen. That's all it is, unlawful sex. Do you understand? Somebody said, well, if he married, he's committing adultery. I agree. He's committing adultery and fornication. He's doing both. Do you understand? He's committing adultery against his companion. He's committing fornication because it's unlawful sex if he go outside of his com companion. But it's both. It's fornication because it's unlawful sex and it's adultery because he got a companion. Amen. It's both. Do you understand? Amen. Read that again, brother. What did he say? And I say unto you. What you say? Whosoever shall put away his wife. Whoever shall put away his wife. Except it be for fornication. Now listen, brother Terry. It said except it be for fornication. What the next verse said? And shall marry another. And shall do, and shall do what? And, ma and shall marry another. Shall marry another. Marry another. What's going to happen? Commit of adultery. Wait a minute, brother Terry. Wait a minute now. How, how, how? If they marry another, they're going to commit adultery if they're not married. Do, do you get it? How are they going to commit adultery if they're not married? All you got to do is just pay close attention to what the scripture said. That scripture is letting you know it's fornication and adultery. It's both. Do you understand? The Bible said if they marry another, they committed adultery. But now if you're saying they are not married, how in the world they commit adultery? Now let me help you. Married folk commit adultery. Do you understand? Look here. Married folk commit adultery. Single folk and married folk commit fornication. Do you understand? Single folk and married folk that have unlawful sex, they commit fornication. Amen. Do you understand? My God, man, listen to me now. Single folk and married folk, it don't matter. When you have unlawful sex, it's fornication. If you got a companion, it's fornication and adultery. It's both. You understand? Amen. Hear me talking now. My God, man. Give me Matthew real fast, brother. Chapter 5 and at verse 31. Let me get both of them. We, we, we pushing here. Matthew 5 and at verse 31. What did it say, twin? It have been said. What? 
Whosoever shall put away his wife. What did it say, son? Let him give her a writing of divorce. Let him give her a, a writing of what? Divorcement. A writing of what? Divorcement. I got a problem here. If they ain't married, what they get a divorcement from? Single folks don't divorce. Do you understand? Look, look, single folks don't divorce. If they're not married, what, what is the divorcement for? What did it say, son? But I say unto you. What you say? That whosoever shall put away his wife. Put away his what? His wife. What did it say, son? Saving for the cause of fornication. And what's it going to do? Cause of her to commit adultery. Here we go again. How you going to cause her to commit adultery if they're not married? It don't, it don't add up, brother. Give me Matthew, brother, 19, and start at verse 3. Let's run fast. So I got some more questions here to get. Matthew 19 and at verse 3. My God, man, what did it say, son? The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying What did they him, say to him, brother? It, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every call? Put away his spouse wife. Put away his wife. This is dealing with a legitimate wife, brother. Put away his wife for every cause. What is that? And he answered and said unto them. What did he say? Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning? What did he make them? Made them male and female. And? And said, for, 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 for this cause shall a man leave father and mother. Man leave father and mother? And shall cleave to his wife. Man leave father and mother. He getting married. Not espouse. He getting married. He cleaving to his wife. What did he say, son? And they twain shall be one flesh. One flesh? One flesh. Let me tell you something. You ain't one flesh when you engage, when you espouse. You one flesh when you get married. Now stay with me, because all these scriptures are spelling out a legitimate marriage here. What did it say, son? Well, for they are no more twain. There are no more twain? But one flesh. What did it say? Well, therefore God have joined together. God have joined them together? Amen. What did it say, son? Let not man put asunder. Don't let man put asunder. Read it. They say unto him. What they say? Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorce? Why did Moses allow us to allow a writing of divorce? What did he say? And to put her away. And to put her away. And he he saith unto them. What did Jesus say? Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. Suffer you to do what? Suffer you to put away your wife. Put away your what? Your wife. Put away your what? Your wife. What did he say, son? But from the beginning. It was not so. What did he say? And I say unto you. What you say, Jesus? Whosoever shall put away his wife. Now wait a minute. All these scriptures spelling out a legitimate marriage, you can't get to verse 9 and say they're not married. That don't add up, brother. Do you understand? We got to teach what's written in the book. When the Bible said, whoever put away his wife except it be for fornication, Jesus gave that ground to put her away for fornication if unlawful sex had took place. But he did not say you can put her away and I can go get me another companion. Paul going to follow it up in 1 Corinthians 7. Start at verse 10, brother, real fast. 1 Corinthians 7 and at verse 10. Let me get you now. Help, let me help you here now. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 10. Paul going to teach the same thing that Jesus done, done taught. 1 Corinthians 7, 10. What did he say? And unto the married I command. Yet not I. But the Lord. What you say? Let not the wife depart from her husband. Don't leave your husband. But, My God, man, the Lord won't, won't marry just to work. Let not the wife depart from her husband. What did he say? But and if she depart. But and if something take place, my God, where well, she got to depart. Remember, except it be for fornication. Something take place where she got to depart. What did he say? Let her remain unmarried. Don't go get another one now. My God, man. If you got to depart, depart. But Paul said remain unmarried or do what? Or be reconciled to her husband. That's what I read out the Bible. I'm compelled to believe what I can read. Give me Jude, brother, one seven. Let, let me, let me, let me help, help the writer here. Help the caller, brother. Let, let us help him. I want to show you, brother, fornication is committed. Any time unlawful sex take place, fornication is committed. It doesn't matter whether you're single or whether you're married. It's unlawful sex, it's fornication. First Corinthians, brother, or better yet, Jude 1, and at verse 7, what did it say? Jude 1, 7, what did it say, son? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, hey, now, now look, what was taking place in Sodom and Gomorrah? Sodom and Gomorrah, was that man with man? Amen. Was it man with man? All right. Continue to read. What did it say? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. What happened? And the cities about them in like manner. What did they do? Giving themselves over to fornication. Giving themselves over to what? Fornication. Giving themselves over to what? Fornication. Hey, Brother Terry, this was man with man. It called that fornication. Why? Because there's unlawful sex. Do you understand? A man lay with an animal, a woman lay with an animal, it's fornication, it's unlawful sex. Any unlawful sex is defined as fornication. My God, if the person is married, it's adultery and fornication. It's both. 1 Corinthians 5 and 1, brother. Let's teach you now. 1 Corinthians 5 and that verse 1. What did it say, son? It is reported commonly that there's, 
there is fornication among you. Take your time. Read that again. What did it say? It is reported commonly that there is fornication. It's among reported you. commonly that there's what? Fornication. There's what? Fornication. That's fornication among you. What did he say, brother? And such fornication. Uh, uh, listen to this now. Such fornication. You know what that's letting you know? It's different types of fornication. Such fornication. My God, man. Look, it's reported commonly that there's fornication among you, but such fornication. What did he say? As is not so much as named among the Gentiles. Paul said a type of fornication. Y'all done fell in. The Gentiles didn't even do this. What did he say, brother? That one should have his father's wife. One should have his father's what? Wife. Father's what? Wife. Wife? Amen. So, so somebody married right there. Amen. But they called it fornication. <clears throat> Did it not? Amen. Somebody said, well, uh, 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 the one who, the man wasn't, wasn't married. How you know? All the Bible said is such fornication. My God, man, it's not even named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Father's wife. But yet it's still called it fornication. Amen. Hear me talk. It was unlawful sex. Do you understand? If the person's married, it's fornication and adultery. I can spell it out with scripture. My God, time for me to get all this, but Mark chapter 10 lets you know you commit adultery against your companion. Hear me talk. I hope we help you, brother. I, I left it out, but it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't an accident. I left it out on purpose. Email comes in. Praise the Lord, Ella Murray. I'm a former member a progressive church of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's an apostolic church. I want to hear your response to what they preach. They believe if you was baptized before you got married and the spouse that you marry is not baptized before your marriage, they are not your wife. They believe you're unequally yoked according to 2 Corinthians 6.14. They also use 1 Corinthians 7.39. If you got married to the above person and divorced, then the person you got married, wait a minute now. This, this thing here gets deep. If you got married to the above person and divorced, then the person who is baptized could marry a sister in the church because they are equally yoked. Because the first wife was not your wife, even though the first wife, first wife was living while you got married to the second wife in the church. What a mess. What a mess. Do you understand? Now let me say this here. Let, let me help you. My God, man, I hope to God progressive ain't teaching that. I, I hope you misunderstood them. I hope they're not teaching that. Do you understand? Let me tell you something. What they're saying is, if I've been baptized, I'm a single man. If I was a single man and I've been baptized, and I marry somebody that have not been baptized, then because that person have not been baptized, she's not my wife. God don't honor that marriage. I can put her away and get me a baptized sister in the church. That's what he's saying they teach. Do you understand? Let me tell you something. If that's what they're teaching, that's an error. Do you understand? Now, let me tell you something. Now, they mentioned 7 Corinthians 6. Uh, 14, give me that. Be not unequally yoked together. Let's get that. Let's help them now. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and that verse 14. My God, I want to show you. My God, yes, you can be une unequally yoked together. That's true. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. What did it say, son? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now listen to Paul. He said, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He said, don't do it. But now if you go out and do it, you just done done it. Amen. You, you, look. He said, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't do it. Paul said, don't do that. But now if you go out and do it, you just done done it. That's yours. Do you understand? I don't care. My God, man, if you've been baptized ten times, and, and look, and she ain't never seen a baptism pool. When you say I do, that's your unbaptized wife. Do you understand? That's your unbaptized wife. Do you understand? My God, man, understand this, brothers and sisters. Even if you go out, save brother, and marry a harlot, that harlot is one flesh with you. Amen. First Corinthians 6.15, brother. Let's teach the people. Hear me talking now. That, 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 that teaching is just not according to the scripture. 
1 Corinthians chapter 6 and at verse 15. My God, what did he say, son? Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ? And do what? And make them the members of an harlot. Paul is teaching against doing it. Don't take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot. But what did he say, son? God forbid. Don't do this. God forbid. What did he say? What? What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot? I, I want you to hear this now. Don't you know that you which are joined to a harlot is what? Is one body. One body? Amen. You become one with a harlot. What did he say, son? For two save he shall be one flesh. It, it, that's dealing with a marriage. That's dealing with a marriage. Two saith he shall be one flesh. If you go out and join yourself to a harlot, that's your harlot wife. Amen. Do you understand? That's your harlot wife, man. Now, Paul said, don't do it. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But if you go out and do it, you just have done it. That's yours. Do you understand? What did he say, brother? For two saith he shall be one flesh. Two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord. Is what? Is one spirit. So now, you go join yourself to a harlot, then you become one flesh with a harlot. No such thing as I can put away my legitimate wife that ain't been baptized because she ain't been baptized, go find me a baptized sister. If any church is teaching that, you are teaching people to live in adultery. That's what you're teaching. Do you understand? Paul spent 1 Corinthians 7 and 12, brother. Paul spelled this thing out. My God dealing with a believer that's married to an unbeliever. Now watch this, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 12. What did he say, son? But to the rest speak I. What did he say? Not the Lord. What you say, brother? If any brother have a wife that believeth not. Paul is dealing with it. If any brother got a wife that is an unbeliever. What did he say, brother? And she be pleased to dwell with him. And she be pleased to dwell with him? Let him not put her away. No, man, put her away, get you a baptized sister. Let, let him not put her away. Put her away, get you one of them sisters with them dresses on, brother. Let him not put her away. You go on a sister with a head covering on. Let him not put her away. I don't care, my God, man, if she look like Jezebel's twin sister, that's your wife. Do you understand? Paul said, don't put her away. Don't you put her away. What did he say, son? And the woman which have an husband that believeth not. And the woman that got a husband that's an unbeliever. And if he be pleased to dwell with her. And he be pleased to dwell with her. Let her not leave him. That's what they taught. Now all this other stuff out here. My God, man, the scripture just don't stand behind. It don't support it. Do you understand? It, they go on to say, uh, also, uh, they say, they also use 1 Corinthians 7, 39. Give me that real fast, brother. If you got married to the above person and divorced, then the person who is baptized can marry a sister in the church because they're equally yoked. Because the first wife was not your wife, even though the first wife was living while you got married to the second wife in the church. Okay? 1 Corinthians 7, 39. What did it say real fast, brother? The wife is bound, bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. How long? As long as her husband liveth. How long? As long as her husband liveth. I don't see why, how can they teach that from that scripture? That scripture hooks them up, bounds them, my God, man. And, and look here, they tied it in a tar baby until death. That scripture lets you know they locked down until death. I, you can't teach that from 1 Corinthians 7, 39. What did he say, son? But if her husband be dead. If her husband be what? Dead. What did he say, son? She is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Where? Only in the Lord. That teaching is false. They, the writer goes on to say that, uh, also, they teach, you must confess all sins to the pastor or God will not forgive you. Let me tell you something. Scriptures don't support such nonsense as that. The Bible teaches we must confess our sins. That's true. But it lets us know who we must confess them to. First John, brother. My God, man, him, uh, 1 John 1 and start at verse 8. 1 John 1 and at verse 8. My God, and then give me Psalm 32, 5. My God, now all this teaching is false. 1 John 1 and at verse 8, what did it say, son? If we say that we have no sin. If we say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves. What did he say? And the truth is not in us. What did he say, son? If we confess our sin. If we do what? If we confess our sins. If we do what? If we confess our sins. What do you say, son? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. What do you say, son? And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you're willing to confess it. But now let me show you who he said you got to confess it to. Give me Psalms 32, brother. And start at verse 5. 
Hear me talking now. Psalms 32 and at verse 5, he's going to let you know who it must be confessed to. What did it say, son? I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Unto who? Unto thee. Unto the pastor. Unto thee. Unto the pastor. Unto thee. What did he say, son? And mine iniquity have I not hid. What did he say, son? I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Unto who? Unto the Lord. Unto who? Unto the Lord. I'm not the Lord. Your pastor's not the Lord. Amen. Do you understand? Bible teach we must confess our sins to the Lord. Wisdom teach. And I can, you know, I, I can testify to this. Because I've seen many pastors take people's business and put it all, you talking about putting it in the street? They put it in the street, they put it over there, they put it everywhere. Do you understand? You have to know who you confide in, confiding in. Do you understand? Many pastors that I know, my God, man, that I was reared up with, my God, man, shared much of the congregation's business right to other brethren. I've seen it. Do you understand? That ain't always wise. Do you understand? It ain't always wise. My God, man, yes, there's some pastors that you can confide in. Yes, there's some, some pastors that, my God, man, ain't going to repeat the information that's brought to him. There, there's some. I, when folks talk to me, I tell people all the time, you ain't got to worry about hearing it no more. If you hear it again, you open your mouth. I guarantee you because I'm not going to open mine. Because when you violate people's trust, do you understand? When you violate a person's trust, it's hard to regain. Do you understand? It's hard to regain. And I've seen men do this over the years, take folks' business that they confided in him and just spread it abroad. That it's not wise to go confessing your sin to all these pastors. I tell you that from experience. Do you understand? My God, not only to the pastor, but to a lot of saints. You better keep your mouth closed. Amen. Do you understand? Keep your mouth closed now. Do you understand? What the one you must confess it to is God Himself. He wants you to acknowledge to him, my God, what, not that he don't know. My God, he already know about it, but he want, look at, he wants you to confess it to him. My God, he wants you to own up to it. My God, own that sin, own that transgression. Let him know I just messed up and I need you to help me straighten out this mess I done made. Do you understand? My God, man, so writer, it must be confessed, my God, to the Lord. Now, if you got a pastor that you can confide in, nothing wrong with that. But that's no biblical commandment that it's got to be confessed to a preacher, to a pastor. It must be confessed to the Lord, according to the scripture. Do you understand? My God, man. Hebrew 13 and 4, real fast, brother. We're coming to a close here. Hebrew 13 and that verse 4. My God, man. All of you that watch, my God, if you have questions, feel free. There's the phone number right there. Feel free to give us a call. Leave your message. I promise you, if you leave a message and request that I return your call, I will return your call. If you have questions, leave them on the answer machine. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Hebrew 13 and that verse 4, brother. What did it say? Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable only with baptized folk. It's honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in, in whoever it is. Do you understand? If it's a legitimate marriage, God honor that marriage. It ain't based on one not being baptized. Do you understand? It's based on the scripture. If you said I do, that's your compact. Do you understand? We thank God for you. Until next time, peace be unto you. Saints, we thank God for you.